Arctic ecosystems are extremely important for the climate as such, for us to document the changes that we are now seeing happening as a consequence of climate change. The Arctic Research Center and Aarhus University Department of Bioscience is a place where we have gathered a wide range of world experts in the Greenland Ecosystem Monitoring Program that has now been operating for 25 years, measuring uh, well over 1,000 environmental parameters year after year. We are investigating the impacts of climate change on ecosystems through our monitoring of the dynamics in the ecosystems. And we are seeing changes, we are seeing changes relating to temperature, permafrost, thaw. We are also seeing it in relation to sea ice decline. So there are a lot of those parameters that we are measuring continuously that are showing signs of impact from climate change already. I'm interested in understanding the link between physical changes, chemical and biological changes in the ocean. We don't know very much on what happens in the currents around Greenland. So what we're trying to find out there is actually what is the water masses and how does it fit into the more global picture. And that's kind of important to know because if you change the currents there, it may result in either you get warmer water into the glaciers that get in contact with Greenland ice sheets so it can melt, or it may kind of buffer it. So we are developing equipment that we can, we can leave out there for a whole year and then transmit the data directly into our computers and then take out the data. I combine three different methods. You can say sort of traditional community-based functional ecology. We look at which species are in an area, uh, how much do they cover and how do they interact with each other. The second approach is dendroecological approach, where we dig out the shrubs, we cut them over and we count how old they are and assess variation in, in cell sizes. But for understanding the magnitude of these changes, we need other tools. So there we are using drones, the newest technology on sensors and satellites to upscale the local information across the landscape. And when we have upscaled that across the landscape, we can start building models that tells us something about what will be the potential changes into the future. In the case of my work, we are mainly focusing on the top of the ecosystem because we are dealing with relations in climate change, but also the effect of the contaminants in these uh, top predators. The major goal is to uh, reduce the contaminant loads of these uh, animals. So we are investigating uh, the exposure, which eventually, eventually gets into the Inuit population. And uh, in the cases where we can document that these substances are increasing, that they're biomagnifying, and that they have a health effect, then we are in dialogue with conventions like the Stockholm Convention trying to mitigate these substances on the international level so that the entire world's population get a lower exposure of these various contaminants. But we can talk about that this region actually has an early action warning because we have so high concentrations. In the Arctic, a number of sort of ecological processes is uh, going at a slower pace because of the cold climate, because of the darkness during winter, because of the ice cover, and that makes the Arctic ecosystems often more sensitive, but also sensitive in a different way than in more temperate areas. And we're looking into that so we can help by research to predict what's going on when you have industrial development in the Arctic. We are very much focused on some of the old mines in Greenland, where mining was done in the last century and where in some places the pollution was uh, pretty heavy. We are sort of using these old mining areas as test areas for developing methods for monitoring pollution and also with the effects of pollution. And these new methods we're using as tools in setting up monitoring programs uh, where new mines is established. The Padma Bioscience is really unique. We are embedded in this network of scientists we have the knowledge on all compartments of ecosystems, the BIOS, the GEOS, the Kuraisphere, and we have, the, we have knowledge on the new technologies, are the skills to apply them and understand the changes. We are working more and more in multidisciplinary projects, where we're also working together with uh, 
anthropologists and uh, socio-economic people. And we are also uh, increasingly working together with uh, local stakeholders. The Aarhus University has a long tradition for measurement in Greenland. Actually one of the longest ecosystem data sets from the Arctic. But we also formed something called the Arctic Science Partnership where we are six countries working very strongly together on all these Arctic uh, issues. Not only around Greenland, but on a pan-Arctic scale. We are working within the Arctic Monitoring and Assessment Program, where we are actually working together with all the eight Arctic countries, embracing all the questions that is uh, important to the change in the ecosystem and the exposure of contaminants. International collaboration is important. We cannot tell what is happening in the Arctic as a whole without looking at the circumpolar north. We need to put what we are measuring in Greenland into a perspective which is arising, of course, from the whole of the Arctic picture. This is the way in which we can tell the rest of the Earth and the globe what is actually the impact of changes in the Arctic.